Now we're all very familiar with this fantastic specimen. But what about these fellas? They're not quite so familiar, are they? This is the hop, and it's these that give the Great British Pint its unique flavour, character and aroma. And in this episode of the Food and Beer Show, I've come to find out all about these. Kent, the Garden of England, an area of the UK with fertile, well-drained farmland and a very mild climate. Hops were first recorded in Kent in 1520 and hop fields are called hop gardens. This was to avoid field tax in medieval times. Hop binds, as the plants are known, are grown up strings suspended from poles and before the advent of mechanical cherry pickers, farmers used to use stilts to tie the strings to overhead wires. The area of Kent given to hop growing has slowly diminished over the years, but one farmer who is still a major hop grower is Tony Redsall. We have got a lot less hops today, haven't we, than we had we, 20 we have, years we, ago? We have 2,500 acres or so today. Uh, in 1950, we had 20,000 acres. In 1870, we had a 77,000, something of that order. Extraordinary. Yeah, the reason for that, though, was nothing to do with disease. It was um, a fellow called Louis Pasteur. Oh, yep, heard of him. Well, <laughs> you, you know, he invented the pasteurization, and so brewers no longer needed to put very heavy hopping rates <clears throat> in their beer to, to preserve it. Uh, magnificent specimens here, Tony. What, what have we got in the, this particular garden? These are early birds. They're a clone of East Kent Goldie. But East Kent was where the Goldie comes from. It, it came from the Canterbury White Vine around 1790 and um, has developed from there. There are a number of clones, cobs, early bird, uh, brambling, and a, a lot of the early clones had the names of the villages where they, the, the far, or the name of the farmer, a man called Cobb, developed uh, a particular seedling and, and that it was, it was his. Um, Bramling is a village, the other side of Littlebourne, and that was grown there, so Bramling. Early bird is, is actually a selection, an early selection of the Bramling variety, but they're all East Kent Golding, just merely subtle differences between them. And, and the local terroir will have an effect on the flavour with it. Well, I mean, you the, couldn't grow them somewhere else in the well, you can grow world, them, for example. Of course, you can grow them somewhere else, but they, they would be subtly different. You see, here we're on the edge of the Thames Estuary. The, the character of the hop is laid down in March. You've got those cold, salt laden winds coming in off the Thames Estuary in March. It, it, it must influence the, the flavour of the hop in some way. The hop is a very complex character, no doubt about it. I love this because that means that flavour must be getting into your beer. Well, exactly, exactly. The, the, I don't know the, the cost of hops per pint of beer varies enormously, but the value of hops is, in the pint of beer is the whole value. It, it is tremendous. It's actually harvesting time while we're on the farm, and it's fascinating to see. The binds are cut down and taken to the barn where the binds are stripped. The hops then go to the drying sheds, which are the modern day version of the oast house, where they're subjected to warm air blown through the hops from huge industrial hair dryers. Then they're packed and off to the brewer. And that's my next port of call. I've come to the historic market town of Faversham to visit Britain's oldest brewery, Shepherd Neem. Beer from here was taken up the coast by boat and there's been a brewery here since 1698. There's even hops around the door. The brewery is steeped in history. The mash tuns are almost 100 years old and the only wooden ones used in the UK today. The mill is also an antique. It was 100 years old when they bought it and that was 60 years ago. Richard Frost is head brewer and the man who knows all about the local hops. So, Richard, Brewer's Dream, located in the middle of Kent's hop gardens. Do you make the most of it? Oh, we certainly do. We do that by using um, 
hops from the local hop gardens around here and in fact 95% of the hops that we use in our beers come from Kent. And how do you use those hops then in the beer making process? I mean for us laymen how would you talk through that process? Well hops can be used at various stages in the process and they're really in there for bittering and also for flavour and aroma. Uh, we add hops at the start of the copper boil process to give bitterness. We can add them at the end of the copper boil to give aroma and some flavour. And then again in a tank before we fill the beer into cask. And again actually in cask. So there's various stages you can add the hops at and they will have a different impact on the flavour and aroma of the beer depending on when they're added. People found used hops um, way back in the about 8, I think about 822 in northern France. Uh, there's documentary evidence of hops being used in a monastery there. And people who were brewing in those days would have found that the best way to get the bittering and uh, flavour compounds out of the hops to extract those would have been to boil the hops with the wort. Now boiling would have sterilised the wort and then they could add their own yeast to ensure that they produce really good quality beer. So it's not only that preservative effect of hops, but I think the fact that you have to boil the wort with the hops was really instrumental in ensuring the growth of hops and changing the beer style, developing the beer styles that we now, uh, we now enjoy today. It's kind of the spiritual home of the hop, isn't it? We don't want spiritual home of beer even down this part of the world. Oh, de definitely. Uh, the, the, and, and I see my role, it's, it's fantastic, my role actually in some ways in terms of protecting that heritage and, well, and, and using locally grown hops as well to ensure that we produce some great hoppy beers. My next stop is only a few miles down the road from Faversham, the National Hop Collection, where there are over 250 varieties of hop that are preserved, including some historic varieties going back to 1806. I was so intrigued by the concept of the National Hop Collection I thought I've got to come and check this out for myself and this is amazing. And I reckon this is to beer lovers and brewers what the Cabin Club is to Beatles fans. The collection is run by the Hop Growers Association and curated by Dr Peter Darby. It's an incredibly important resource not only in its role as preserving the hop varieties but to enable brewers to develop new varieties for both taste and resistance to pests. Oh, this is sensational. The aromas are amazing. It's literally beer on a tree. With over 300 different hop oils, the breeding programme allows brewers to develop new varieties to keep giving us new and exciting beers. The binds can grow up to four inches a night during their peak growing times and they really are incredibly majestic plants almost like a garden of triffids. Every time I have a great beer experience it stimulates a recipe idea and I'm delighted to say that my senses haven't let me down. This dish is sautéed lamb's kidneys with a pancetta, cream and beer sauce on fried bread. First make the fried bread. Melt some oil and butter in a pan. Fry the bread until golden brown. Then in a dry pan, nice and hot, fry off the pancetta and put to one side. Right, I've cut my fried bread and I've cut my pancetta. I'm leaving the fat from the pancetta in the pan. I've added a bit of butter and in we go with our kidneys. I've prepared those by taking the skin off, taking out the white sinew bit from the middle, otherwise they just curl up and we're just going to cook those on a high heat until they go lovely and golden brown with, essentially, the good old Malden sea salt mixed in there with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Right, I've cooked these for a couple of minutes on each side until they're nice and golden brown and I want them just a little bit pink in the middle. And we're just going to put those onto a warm dish. So next stage, I've got some fresh oregano here. So I think those, that's going to go beautifully. Just a little sprinkling into there. 
then in with our lamb stock and I'm just going to turn the heat right up here and I want to reduce that down a little bit in it goes just give it a couple of minutes make sure you get all those lovely flavors up off the bottom of the pan from the kidneys so our lamb stock has reduced down by about half and the flavors of the oregano have infused in there we've got all the flavors from the bottom of the pan next time for the beer here we go now just to be sure i've got the right one for the job chef's privilege oh yeah this is spitfire from shepherd neem it's local it's perfect lovely biscuity malt good sharp hoppy bite to it that's going to be perfect with our kidneys and our pancetta so in it goes not too much remember there's a bitterness to that beer and when it reduces it concentrates that bitterness but i do want those lovely biscuity malts coming through next in with the double cream reduced down by about half to thicken the sauce so this sauce has now reduced down nicely we've got a nice coating consistency to it so back in with our kidneys and all those juices as well that have come out the kidneys and the pancetta and it goes and we're just going to warm that through now in the sauce give it a good coating make sure you've got plenty of your favorite ale poured into glasses fried bread on the plate on with the kidneys and the sauce now look at that absolutely gorgeous now middle of the day there's nobody here apart from our two crew here we're going backstage for a bit of a tasting guys check this out and you thought you weren't going to get a taste didn't you because you thought the table was too messy to be filmed i'm afraid you're wrong so there we go um you're still working you're not allowed to have any beer with that yet oh, it's okay go on have a sip of the beer taste of the food and let's see what you think i like it off with the headphones max yeah lovely we like that good well i'll um can i take that back then <laughs> as with food when you know the regionality the provenance the passion that's gone into producing it it really does taste better and that's so true of beer too and having visited these hop gardens today this is going to taste even better from now on and uh, i better get out of here because the hop pickers are coming in my direction right now cheers <laughs>